Hello Commanders and welcome to this video for Infinite Lagrange. A lot has happened and a lot has changed. It is really really interesting what's going on right now. Let's start with my new location. As you can see I got this green nebula behind me. I'm in a radiation zone. That means unfortunately I had to switch my fleet from the light to a heavy fleet. And um, just to give you a very quick overview, what did I do? I wanted to stay with my um, air fleet, so instead of the destroyers, I now have to use everything that is at least cruiser or heavier. As I do have the solar veil with an additional module, I use four solar veils to bring in nearly everything as you can see here i got the cellular defenders nebula chaser spores and centrix all in the solar veil and only the t800 is in the jaeger the callisto i wanted to take it with me but at the same time i wanted to have a strong front row therefore i have the io and the chimera from testing so far the io is not doing as well as i was hoping or expecting in this case let's take a quick look here I got two fights when collecting data and as you can see the chimeras they hold their position pretty well they got some damage but the IOs they got shot down pretty damn bad I will see how that goes I only have 36 tech points at the moment in the IO and already 48 in the chimera so it's not completely fair yet but anyhow Going this way because I am forced to also brought me up to take another look into my research agreement and there is one ship I really want to get and let me quickly show this to you. This is the Predator B. Why the Predator B? I mentioned it last time. It comes as tactical version still bringing in four fighters and an additional three UAVs that will increase the hit chance. That is very interesting and when we talk about fighters it is getting even more interesting and for this we will switch over to the website. There is a lot going on. We did get a patch that already brought us some of these changes, the combat mechanics and the explorer support program preview. The explorer support is now already available, it got patched in yesterday, um, but the combat mechanic adjustments, they are on the way and they are coming. And if you take a look at this, it's getting very interesting. So far, the only thing you could do when you attacked systems on a ship was to disable the main weapon system. That's all. So you didn't have any choices, no strategic um, yeah, options there. Um, very simple, check your blueprint. Let's say the CV-3000. Um, we can see here with the M marked, the aircraft hangar was the main system, while for example of the Constantine the main weapon is a gamma storm and um, for something like uh, let's take the Jaeger we do have the main weapon here for example at the integrated battery system which can be very interesting because let's be honest I don't care if someone disables the integrated battery system of my Jaeger as long as I still can use the Corvettes I am fine and this is going to change with the patch coming on March I think 23rd if I remember that right. Now let's see. Um, they will give us multiple options. Destroying the weapon system that is what we most often did but so far it was only the main system. But from now on there will be ships that will always destroy the weapon system. Ships that destroy hangar systems. Ships that destroy propulsion systems, meaning the evasion rate will go down. This might be the game changer versus the Carillion. We will have to see how that gets into place. But I could imagine that this will target directly against the Carillion special. Destroy the common system to take out specific strategic skills. So there will be strategic skills that will be moved from like the weapon system or other systems 
to the comment system and then these can be disabled. Um, that's written here. They will adjust the strategic strategic chills, oh, strategic skills for ships weapon systems to be assigned to the comment system. Now let's take a very quick look. The Vitas, for example, they will um, attack propulsion systems. So that is something very interesting and primary hangar systems in sequence. So my understanding is first they will kill the propulsion, then they will kill the hangar if there is one. For the B192 new lander, they will continue attacking the primary weapon system. Um, the Gen Baya will attack the command system, then the weapon system, then the hangar system. Um, I tried the Gen Baya quite a few times and it did not really convince me. But with this change it might get really really yeah good because if you take a look at the Vitas that will target the propulsion and the hangar system. So after this they will not take out anything else anymore. And here for the Gen Baya we at least can take out everything that's there beside the propulsion system. Um, I don't want to go through all of these. You can read the whole list um, yeah, whenever you want. Maybe to mention the Spore. It's a light fighter. I really like this one. It will still continue with the primary weapon system. Then the common system in sequence. So um, as you see it's a lot of changes. Oh, it's, um, yeah, here on March 23 that will come. We will get two tech point restoration items. And that is, that is big. I think that's the first time ever that we get tech point restoration items outside um, the season shop. So take a very, very close look at the ships you have and think very carefully about which one you want to reset to use these tech points somewhere else. These tech point restoration items, they are very valuable. There's no other way to get them so far beside one time each season that you can buy them. Now the Explorer support program is already online. It's available as no novice Explorer. So these are all the people who are still in season one. Um, they can get it directly here. And you can also upgrade it to a veteran explorer program where you get then a little bit extra um, tech points. For the veteran explorer program, these are the people, let's see how do they write it, um, who signed agreements twice or above, or who are signing the second agreement. Agreement, so that should be there for season two and upwards. We will get this one where we get a few rewards. Um, let me switch over to the game again. I did not yet pick that up. I wanted to wait till I make that video to showcase it. So we do have it. Uh, where did we have it? I always click it wrong. So I'm sorry, guys. So it's in the event we do have the Veteran Explorer program. We can claim 300 Proxima coins and yeah, it will end in 28 days. If we click the question mark, there's not really much. So the reward varies according to the number of star systems explorations you have completed. Completing star system exploration once, twice, three times, four times will give you 900, 700, 500 or 300 Proxima coins. Um, I only got 300. I'm a little bit surprised there, but um, yeah, that's what it is. Maybe I just have to explore more star systems. Whatever that. Yeah, maybe I just went into the wrong season. So um, yeah, that's the update. I do think the changes in the battle mechanics will be really, really interesting. I think they can mix things up quite a lot. And um, also one thing I didn't go into detail, the emergent evasion. So that's when your frontline ship falls back to the middle line when the HP falls to 10%. This skill will be put into the command center. So 
this can then be also disabled by some of these um, fighters that can do or other ships that can do um, system damage let's take a look where do we have our frigates um, here we have some Maris Serenitatis this one will attack weapons and propulsion systems and the Railyard Stealth will attack weapons and also propulsion systems so if you want to destroy the command center you will need to use fighters or corvettes but I will link the I will copy the link into the description so you can look for yourself into each of these details whenever you want um, I am already curious I can't wait to play around with this and till then um, I think this will even make some of the fighters stronger I think it will not shift the meta away from fighters they will do a lot of damage still and uh, most of the fighter stuff so far anyhow was focusing um, not on destroying um, the systems but on really doing lots and lots of damage so I will continue researching Antonio's together with sorry here's a strategy and support to get maybe a Marshall Cruz that would be really great um, or what I'm really trying to get would be the Predator B type um, the chances for that are pretty low so um, don't really have high hopes to get it I will not accelerate it anymore you see I'm already at my fourth research agreement this season and um, there's no need to waste more of the tech points I don't have so many at the moment and I need to get my ships up maybe another important thing as we talked about data before I'm not sure if you already saw this sometimes you see these ruins with a special symbol like here this yeah bluish greenish however you want to call it this means that you can collect more data from what I saw so far if I collect data um, somewhere else let's see yeah here I get 15 data only if I collect data at a place with a symbol I do get much more like here I got 303 data so if you collect data try to get to a ruin with this special symbol um, they won't stay there forever as soon as the symbol is there usually you will see the percentage here this one will probably stay forever because it's inside the scattered asteroid belt but inside the radiation belt so it's a little bit of a suicide mission to try to get it there but like here this one that's perfect that is one that I will try to um, far more and here we can see 67% of the collectible data is left Okay, so I hope you liked the video. I hope I was able to give you some more information and some insights of the patch that is coming. I am looking forward to it. I hope you do too. As usual, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you on the next video again.